So let's go ahead and get started, and those who join uh, later, uh, that'll be fine. Today, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about how to create a brand new speaking you. That is a brand new speaking identity. And this is really, really important. This is really important. If you're just joining us, go ahead and type in where you're joining us from or from where you're joining us. Okay. This is going to be interactive. Um, so if you have questions or comments, just go ahead and type them in. I can see them here and I can respond to them over here on my computer. Okay. All right. So go ahead and please just type those in. Now, what's important here about your speaking identity is that it governs and it controls everything else. So let's talk about what I mean when I say creating a brand new speaking identity. So you may hear me interchange words, speaking identity, speaking you. Uh, very, very important. It has to do with your belief system, right? Your self-concept, uh, your self-image in a sense. Who you see yourself as, as a speaker. So you and I have an identity or little identities. We have little self-concepts, beliefs for who we are in a wide variety of areas in our life, right? So we have an identity for how we drive a car, for how we perform in sports, for how we speak in meetings, for how we give presentations, for how we answer the phone, for how we talk to strangers, for how we talk with speak with people that we know. Right? We have these identities that manage, that govern, that control how we do all of those things. You've probably heard me talk about situational stuttering, right? So one situation, you're fine. Another situation, can't say anything, or another situation gets very choppy. Talking with someone in authority, all of a sudden you become self-conscious, it gets choppy. You're talking with a kid and you can speak fine. You're ordering coffee, it's really hard. You're over here and it's fine, right? So it's all these different situations. It has to do with your identity. This is how you see yourself in those particular situations. So does anyone have any questions about that definition? Let me just ask you, those of you that are listening, do you have any questions about what we mean when we, when we say uh, creating a brand new speaking identity? What, what does that mean? Have I explained that clearly enough? I'll just give you a second just to respond. If I did, just go ahead and type in uh, yes if you can, if you're not driving or whatever. Okay, I'm just checking over here to see if anyone has responded. So hopefully I've been able to clearly explain what we mean by speaking identity. So then you have a self-concept, you have a belief for how you speak. You have an identity for who you are as a speaker. Am I a good speaker? Am I a poor speaker? Do I get really nervous and anxious? Does my mind get cloudy? Do I speak smoothly? Can I say what I want to say? How do I speak in different situations? Right. So you have an identity. What we want to do is to show you in the series, right? because we're not going to be able to do it all in one video, we want to show you in the series how you can actually create a new speaking identity. So you have to define who you want to be as a speaker. So in order to create a brand new speaking identity, one of the first things that you have to do is define who you want to be as a speaker. Let me pause there and ask you, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? Go ahead and respond if you're able to, if what I'm saying makes sense. So that is, in order to create a brand new speaking identity, you have to define the kind of identity where you want to define who you want to be, right? And who you want to be in different speaking situations. So that's the first step. The next thing that you're going to want to do is say, okay, 
Now that I have some kind of a clear idea as to who I want to be, and we'll talk about how you can pick or define who you want to be in another session, but right now I just want to give you a few of the steps. So, man, I want to create a brand new speaking identity. Why? So that I can say what I want to say, right? So that I can speak confidently, so I don't have to be afraid of stuttering. So how do I do The well, first thing I need to figure out, who do I want to be as a speaker, right? So there are some words that we can use to define the kind of person that you want to be as a speaker, number one. The second thing that we're going to focus on today is conducting your train of thinking. Conducting your train of thinking. So I want you to think of a train, a train that's moving. And you can either be a passenger on that train or you can be a conductor on that train, right? Where you can take the train down whatever tracks you want. You can slow the train down, you can speed it up, you can go on this track or that track. You want to become the conductor of your train of thinking. We all have trains of thinking. Who can tell me what I mean by a train of of thinking. Go ahead and type that into the chat box for me. What do I mean when I say a train of thinking? I'm going to, I'm going to type in uh, the question too. What do I mean when I say a train of thinking? Think about it. See if you can give me an answer. What do I mean when I say a train of thinking? I'm, I'm going to wait for just a few moments because I really want you to think about this and to answer me if you can. What do I mean when I say a train of thinking? So we got about seven people watching, including myself, so about six people. Do any of you have any thoughts on that? What do I mean when I say a train of thinking? The thoughts which are going on in our mind. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. The way you want to share your thoughts. Hmm, huh, interesting. Okay. Good, good. A sort of a sort of a chain reaction. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good, 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 good. So we got the thoughts that are going on in your mind, the way you want to share your thoughts, right? So you have an intention of how you want to share, and it's sort of a, a chain reaction. A chain reaction. So one thing happens, another thing happens. Okay, good, good. All right. So let's let's incorporate all of those because all of those are touching on parts of what I mean. Yes, exactly. When we talk about a train of thinking, your entire thinking process. Yes, exactly. When we say a train of thinking, we are talking about essentially how you think and what you think. How you think and what you So your attitude, your attitude is kind of your outlook. So I have a pessimistic perspective, a pessimistic attitude, which means I tend to look at everything negatively. Like, this is going to go wrong. This is going to happen. I'm not going to be able to. So that's a pessimistic attitude. Or I have an optimistic attitude, which means I'm looking and I'm saying, you know what? Everything's going to work out. I am going to be able to do this. This is going to work out well. Optimistic, right? So a train of thinking would be uh, how I think on a regular basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. What are the content of my thoughts? How am I thinking? What am I thinking? What are the content of my thoughts on a moment-to-moment -moment basis? So sometimes you can wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you begin to worry about stuff. Right? You begin to worry about a presentation or an interview or something that you have coming up. That becomes your train of thinking. And if you're not careful, you can be carried away with that train of thinking. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever started thinking about something, the next thing you thought, the next thing you looked, all of a sudden you were just worrying about that. That thing you had been thinking about just took your thoughts away for minutes or even hours. All right? So what's happening is you have a train. It's a direction of thinking. 
Now here's why this is so important when it comes to your identity. Wherever and whatever you think about constantly and consistently and repetitively, whatever you are thinking about in that way, your train of thinking, starts to become a habit, right? And it starts to form and support a belief. So if you're constantly thinking that you're going to get stuck, if you're constantly anticipating and thinking, I'm going to get stuck, I'm not going to be able to say this, ah, I'm always messing up. Guess what? That train of thinking becomes a belief and it becomes a part of your identity. And so you no longer have to consciously think about it, it just is, right? It's, it becomes a memory, becomes a pattern. So whenever you are in certain situations, you automatically look back and you look to your previous experiences and you say, well, how did I respond the last time? How am I supposed to respond this time? So your brain immediately goes back and says, okay, how did we respond in similar situations? Oh, okay, well, this is how we responded. Well, it's not just how you responded, but it's how you interpreted that. It's how you thought about what happened. So you could have messed up and then said, okay, I messed up, no problem, I'm gonna do better the next time. You could have messed up and said, ah, oh, man, I'm always messing up. So now you've established a certain train of thinking with regards to speaking in that particular situation, right? Negative, all right, got a comment. Negative train of thinking e equals predispose yourself to starting choppy speech. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you, if you constantly have a negative train of thinking, you're constantly anticipating that you're going to get stuck, you're constantly beating yourself up, right? You're just thinking this all the time. What it does is it sets you up for that to continue to happen. It becomes a part of your belief, your identity, like who you are. This is the reason why, and I want you to listen. This is the reason why I say, try not to use the word stutter as it relates to yourself. Don't say, I'm a stutterer, my stuttering problem, my problem with this. Because what you're doing is you're identifying yourself as a stutterer. This is your identity. So it's hard to identify yourself as a stutterer and at the same time work on your speech. It's hard to identify yourself as a stutterer and say I'm an excellent speaker because the stuttering is going to win out. So you have to change your language, which we'll talk about in another session. Right now we're talking about changing our thinking, right? So once you find yourself thinking about something, a certain direction of thinking, a train of thinking, what must you do to change that? Well, if you're the conductor of your train of thinking, you just put on the brakes and you stop. Alternatively, you can change the direction of that train, right? So whichever image you want to use, you can stop that train of thinking, get off that train and get on another train, or you can change the direction of that train of thinking. So rather than thinking this, instead you start thinking this over here. This doesn't necessarily happen easily or immediately. You might have to battle for a little while changing the direction of your thinking. You may say, okay, I'm not going to continue to anticipate I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to anticipate that I'm going to be able to say this well. But all of a sudden, the same train of thinking keeps coming. You keep thinking, I'm going to get stuck. So you just keep gently bringing it over here. No, I'm going to be able to, I'm going to, be able to speak like my model, for example, or I'm going to be able to say this smoothly. And you might just keep bouncing back and forth, back and forth, until finally what happens? Finally, that train of thinking is diverted, right? It's finally diverted. How does that happen? Why is that important? Well, what's happening is your current speaking identity, right, which says, this is how I speak, this is how I'm going to speak, this is how I've always spoken, I've tried this program, I've tried that program, I didn't. and so you're constantly thinking that way. It's part of your identity. So then, when you try to tell yourself something different, something positive, your identity pulls you back. Right? Your identity just pulls you back. It pulls you back into your comfort zone, into a place of what we call homeostasis, where you feel balanced and comfortable. It's like an uncomfortable comfort zone. So you're in a place that's uncomfortable, right, because you can't say what you want to say, but yet it's comfortable because it's where you've been. So in changing your identity, 
there's going to be a bit of a battle. There is going to be a bit of a battle. So you have to understand that, right? I'm just telling you that right now. You have to understand there's going to be a bit of a battle between this new train of thinking, right? This new track that you want to run on and the old track. And so once you understand, okay, this is going to be a battle. I'm going to get some pushback, some resistance to this. It's the way our brains are wired. Then you understand that and you just continue to gently change tracks, change tracks. And as you change your train of thinking, you're also creating a new speaking identity. Okay. So one of the keys, one of the first things that we'll talk about today, and then we'll talk about another key in another session. One of the keys is to take control of your train of thinking, right? To change the track that your train is running on. That is important because the more you do that, every moment, every day, the more you do that, it actually creates a new pattern, a new habit of thinking, a new way of thinking about yourself and your ability to speak well in certain situations, right? And as you create this new pattern, what is it doing? It's also changing your identity. Right? So it all starts with your thoughts. It starts with your thoughts. Any um, thoughts? Give me your thoughts and questions about this. I'm just going to give you maybe a minute or so. I know you've been listening, you've been listening, you've been listening. Some thoughts have been going through your mind. Share your thoughts or your questions or comments. All right. Sometimes we can't get control of the train of thinking process, right? How to do this? Yes. So sometimes your train just gets carried away, right? And it just keeps going. So a couple of ways, and one of these ways we're going to talk about as a specific step or strategy or tool or key in depth, but I'll mention it now. One we've already mentioned. You understand that when you say we can't, that you actually can, but you might not be able to gain control of it in that moment, right? Like immediately just change tracks. But understand that you have to try, right? You have to try. And the way that you try is you don't tell yourself what you don't want to think. You simply replace what you don't want to think about with what you do want to think about. Let me say that again. You gently replace, right, like the law of substitution. You substitute a current train of thinking with a new train of thinking. Sometimes it's best just to let that train pass by. You say, okay, there it is again, right? So you become aware, okay, whoa, wait a minute. I'm thinking this way right now. Just raising your awareness that I'm thinking this way right now. Sometimes we're not even aware that we're thinking. You raise your awareness, okay. I'm thinking this way right now. Sometimes that's all that you need to do. Other times you say, okay, I'm aware, but I'd like to think about this. All right. I'd like to think about this instead. Let me think about uh, the message that I want to communicate and not think about what they're thinking of me. One of the biggest things that happens when people are presenting or speaking is they're worried about what the other person's thinking of them. So they've shifted to becoming more self-conscious, and that's when they start to mess up. So if you gently shift your thinking back to, wow, I'd like to think about how I'm going to positively impact this person. I, 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 let me think about the message that I want to communicate, not what they're thinking of me. I want to think about the message. So, uh, William, I'm going to read yours and get to yours in just a moment. Thank you for sharing. So one of the things that we do is we gently shift our train of thinking to what we want, right? The other thing that we have control over, Soresh, is our actions. So sometimes it's a matter of changing our actions, changing what we actually do, which then changes our thinking. So if I want to start moving my body slower, if I want to actually speak slower, I have control over that. I can speak slower. Or I can move my body slower. When I start moving my body slower and I start seeing myself going slower, it actually changes the way I'm thinking. That's just one small example. 
So one of the things that you can do when you say we can't is you become aware that you're thinking, you become aware of what you're thinking, and then you gently substitute that with something else. You don't battle it and say, I don't want to think this, I don't want to think this. You substitute it with something else. Okay. All right, William. When speaking on the fly, like in an extemporaneous situation, how can you control yourself from glitching or stammering during your presentation? Thank you. Okay, well, um, you know, a part of that comes from training yourself to be able to do that. But I'll give you some things that you can do right now. Now, if you notice, I'm really speaking extemporaneously right now. So I thought about what I wanted to say, but I didn't want this to be like a big presentation. I wanted it to be more interactive. So I didn't go through and plan out everything that I wanted to say. Uh, all right, I'm going to get to your question just a little bit soorish. Okay, so, so I planned this out. So this is more extemporaneous. I had a, a topic, a subject. And what you want to focus on is you want to focus on the intent, the impression, and the impact. Right? The intent, the impression, and the impact. I'm going to, type, I'm going to just type that in. Intent. Impression of your speech. Okay, so what do I mean by that? If I'm talking to someone and I'm explaining something or whatever, then what I want to do is think about what is the idea, what is the intent of what I'm trying to get across? Am I trying to ask them a question? Am I trying to solicit information? What's the information I want to know? Why do I want to know it? If I'm trying to communicate something, what is it that I'm trying to communicate? Is it an idea? Is it something I feel? Is it my perspective? Right? So I'm trying to communicate something to them. If I'm trying to make an impact on them. I want them to hear and understand, or I want them to agree, or I want them to respond to me. So what's the intent of my communication? Right? This is why we speak. So instead of thinking about, I hope I can say this word, and I wonder if they're going to, that's distraction, right? That's a distraction, that's distractive thinking. You want to think about the purpose beyond, behind why you're speaking in the first place. I want to ask this person a question, right? So what's the question? Or, or I want to communicate something. What do I want to communicate? How do I want them to feel? How do I want to impact them? What kind of impression do I want to make on them when I'm speaking? Well, I want them to hear it clearly, I want them to understand it, maybe I want them to agree, I want to persuade them. So you think about it. So what can I do to help persuade the listener of what I'm saying? Well, make sure it's not boring, or make sure I have facial expressions, make sure that using my hands, all those things come naturally the more you do it. So when you think about the intent, right, the impression and the impact, often you can do this through modeling, you don't have time to then think about glitching, getting stuck, or stammering because you, how you want to communicate. Does this make sense? So distracting yourself with a positive distraction. Now, the more you do this, the more you practice this, the smoother your speech will become, the better you'll be able to do this. Here's another key that you'll hear me talk about in the Pro 90D speech system, and that is slow your speech down. Take your time, right? And I work with people every day, and I see how they have transformed by just reminding, by listening to my audios, by practicing, by going through a daily routine. They're able to remind themselves, slow your speech down. Take your time. You don't have to rush. And every time so when I slow my speech, my speech gets smoother. Speech gets smoother and easier. Your thinking gets clearer, and you're able to communicate and speak more smoothly and clearly. So, let me uh, go back. How can you control yourself and glitch your stamina? Yeah. One way is to focus on the, your, the intent of your presentation, the impact you want to make on your audience, right? The impression that you want. How, what, how do you want them to walk away? Wow, that was really good. Man, that was great. I learned, you know what? I learned two or three things from this person. What are those two or three things? Right? Think about that. 
and do everything in your power to make sure that that's communicated in your presentation because that's the purpose of why you're communicating in the first place. Anything else that you think about, what they're thinking about you, I hope I don't get stuck on this word, okay, I got, that's a distraction. All right, I hope I addressed your question, I hope I answered it, okay. Those, all right, so, so, those, so really those are uncontrolled reactions. During this time we get, during this time we get stutter. Uncontrolled reactions, yes. Here's the thing, uh, this is why many people continue to stutter uh, some people stutter for the rest of their life because they feel like stuttering is uncontrollable. Guess what? It's not uncontrollable. It may be uncontrollable like right now in the moment only because the person hasn't been training themselves to replace stuttering and its accompanying, th its accompanying thinking with something new, right? So in the moment, if I say, okay, don't stutter, you might not be able to do that. But actually, there are some things that we can do to relax you and smooth your speech out in the moment, like immediately. But the fact of the matter is, it's not uncontrollable in the long term. William? Sure, sure, great. I'm glad that I was able to answer your question. So, Soros, you can control your speech. You have to think about it in these terms, something called the law of accumulation. Everything you do counts, right? It's like building muscle, learning a skill. This is learning a skill, right? Creating a habit, learning a new language. You don't just all of a sudden learn the language, you learn the skill. You build up to it, it accumulates over time, little by little. The same thing with stuttering. You become aware of what you're doing, then you you begin to say, oh, I just did it. Right? Whereas before you didn't even know that you did it, or maybe you did know that you did it, but you didn't do anything about it. You say, okay, I just did it. And then what happens is you become more and more aware and you say, okay, I'm about to do it. Or I'm in the middle of it, let me stop. Or I'm about to do it, let me do something else. And then, okay, rather than even getting up to the place where I'm about to do it, let me proactively prevent it. Let me speak this way so that I don't even get stuck. Does this make sense? So you actually can control it, but more than controlling it, you can completely replace it. It just takes awareness, right? Awareness, and then repetition. You constantly replace it with something else. Okay? I hope that that addressed what you just said. How to maintain a positive mindset. Uh, how to maintain a positive mindset during a stressful speaking situation. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, see what we can do with that. Uh, how do you maintain a positive mindset during a stressful speaking situation? Okay, it kind of goes back to what we talked about a little earlier. There's a webinar I did it has to do with uh, captivating your audience, conquering fear and captivating your audience. A lot of this has to do with your focus, right? Your focus, your intent. So, if I'm speaking, and if I'm more focused on not messing up, on not making a mistake, on hoping that I do well, on making a positive impression on the audience, in the sense that, ooh, I hope I don't mess up, I need to make a positive impression, right? So you want to make a positive impression, but you don't want to worry about making a positive impression. You want to proactively say, this is the impression I want to leave with the audience. I don't want to worry about making it. I'm going to make it. So it's all about, again, your train of thinking. If I'm just constantly thinking about what I don't want to happen, then guess what's going to happen? The very things that I don't want, because that's what I'm focused on. Right? That's where my mind is going. However, and alternatively, if I think about how I want to speak and the impression that I want to make, for example, as I'm speaking now, or when I speak in a video, when I speak live, I think about the impression that I want to make. I think about the information that I want you to get, right? And so I almost go blank. I have an intent have things that I want to say, 
But other than that, I'm just focused on that. I'm focused on that intention and that impression. I'm not thinking about what you're thinking of me. Someone could be looking at me and say, I don't like his face or I don't like his room or I don't like his hair. I'm going to think about that stuff. If I thought about that or, oh, well, he just messed up there. You see, he just got stuck. If I thought about all that stuff, what would I not be thinking of? I wouldn't be thinking of the message, right? I wouldn't be thinking of the information or the intent of my message or the impression that I want or the impact. I'd be worried about, oh, well, what are they thinking about me? So when you're doing a presentation, you want to really think about your audience, like serving your audience. Think about, man, how can I help my audience? How can I make a positive impact and impression on them so that when they walk away, they leave with something? Or if you're working in the tech industry and you have to give a presentation, what's the intent? Well, I need to present the work that I've been doing the last week. So what I want to do is a couple of things. One, I want to make sure that what I say is clearly understood by everyone sitting around the table. That's number one. So then how do I accomplish that? Watch this. I want to make sure that I articulate clearly, that I go slow enough that everyone can hear and understand what I'm saying. Because if I rush and I mumble and I go too fast, then people are not going to understand. So therefore, I've wasted my time because I wasn't clear. Clarity, right? So the intent, the purpose, the goal is to be clear. I want to be clear. I'm giving this report. I want it to be clear. Two, I want to work on my speech, right? I want people to say, wow, that was pretty good. I really liked his speaking style. So what do I need to do to make sure that I have a pleasant, pleasing speaking style? Do I have facial expressions? Do I have hand gestures? Am I modulating my voice or am I kind of monotone, right? So I'm going to look at my body language, my presentation style, and say, I want to present this information in such a way that it makes a positive impression on my listeners. So let me just work on this aspect of my Let me work on my hand gestures. Let me work on my voice modulation. So it's, it's almost like a game. Okay, well, how, do I, how did I do that time? Well, I did a little better than the last time. Do you see where I'm going? What's happening is now you are, and we're over our time, so I'm going to wrap it up here. You're actually focused on something that's positive. So your question was how to maintain a positive mindset. When you're focused on something that's positive, which is clarity, I want the audience to understand, I want them to have a good experience with me and my speech or my speaking, my presentation. I want to also make sure that I'm communicating in a way that holds their attention. When you're focused on all of those things, they're more likely to happen. They are going to happen. I can tell you that. I can guarantee that when you focus on it and you work on it, it does happen. That's how you maintain a positive mindset. You gently shift to your audience, to your audience, you're serving your audience. That's all you think about. Alternatively, you focus on modeling, right? So we'll get into that in another session, right? That's another way to do this. Okay. All right, let's see. We'll take uh, another question and then we will wrap it up. Um, just want to make sure that I try to hold to my time as much as possible. But I want to answer your questions. That's why, that's why we're doing this. I agree. Being brave, courageous is necessary. Uh, alongside of practicing these skills personally, the times I stop myself from sharing my thoughts is the fear of humiliating myself speech-wise in public. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, sometimes when you think about, you have to work on the skills, right? So just listening to me now and saying, okay, well, uh, I'm just going to go out and I haven't worked on it, I haven't practiced, I'm just going to go out and start sharing. And if you haven't practiced or worked on these skills, then you might go out and mess up, which just reinforces, okay, say Mike Williams said we could do this, and I just screwed up again. No, we're not saying do that. You want to practice, you want to work on this, but then you want to go out and you want to do it. And when you're sharing, you have to share for a long time. Just say, okay. I got an idea, I got a thought that I want to share. Uh, let me just take my time. I don't have to say a lot of words. Let me just, for example, focus on speaking like my model, or let me focus on extending and blending my words. And let me just say this. And it's okay for me to use introductory words. I was at a conference 
last four days, I was listening to how people were starting and how they were speaking. And you could just hear people going, so, um, well, I mean, just doing all kinds of things. Entrepreneurs with smart people. You could just hear them using all kinds of introductory words and sounds and transition words because it was natural speech and pausing and pausing. So when you feel like you can't do that, like if I want to say what time is it, and if I can't say what time it is, then I get stuck. No. I mean, people were just saying all kinds of things to get started. These are not people who struggle with their speech, right? You can do that too. So you, you do want to practice, right? You do want to practice. You do have to have courage to actually get out there and do it and mess up. You're going to mess up. Sometimes you're going to get stuck. But you got to keep doing it. It's just like me. If I want to speak Spanish, I got to get out there and mess up and keep doing it. And you want to focus on the impact that sharing your thoughts is going to have on the listener. Not on what the listener is thinking about you, but just, hmm, I want to share this thought because I think this will be really helpful, right? So I'm going to share this thought and think about the impact and the impression that people are going to walk away with. Moy, how are you, man? We're, we're actually just about to wrap up, but, but thank you for joining us. And you will be able to watch the replay of this. Moy is one of my coaching clients, uh, if this is the same way. So, Erica, I hope I answered your question. Did I address it? Okay, I, I guess I did because you said excellent, thanks. Or you could have said, no, that really sucks. You didn't answer my question at all. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, I'm going to, to wrap it up. Let me just summarize what we talked about. Thank you for all of your questions and engagement. And we'll be doing this, at least for this series, that is creating a brand new speaking identity uh, for the next few weeks or so. All right. So every week, um, maybe around the same time, but maybe it could be on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, I'll try to send you an email or a message as to when we're going to do it. We're going to have a webinar this Saturday, and the topic will be around freedom. Freedom, right? Isn't that what you all want? You want to be free to express your ideas, to say what you want to say, when you want to say it, the way you want to say it, without the fear of stuttering. And even without thinking about the fear, so you just want to be able to say what you want to say, when you want to say it, the way you want to say it, and say it confidently. You want to turn your speech into an asset and not have it be a liability, right? Where you feel free to be who you want to be to do whatever you want to do. So we're going to talk about that. I'll send you some details this Saturday. You want to be at this webinar, okay? Also have some very special offers for you at this webinar. Uh, so in reviewing, we talked about creating a brand new speaking identity. This is what governs everything else, right? It's changing your identity. Here's a few things. One, you have to change your language, right? We'll talk about that. You change your thinking. You don't let yourself think whatever you want to think. Oh, okay, I'm always doing this. I can't do that. This happened. You don't let yourself think that. There's going to be a battle when you try to change it. You understand that. What you want to do is gently shift your thoughts to how you want to speak. That's why I've created so many audios to help give you new content to think about. This is why in my fast action daily routine, I say listen to these audios every single day. So it changes your thinking, it changes the content, it changes the train of thinking, right? So you want to change your train of thinking. You want to become the conductor of your train of thinking. That's what we talked about today. You gently do it by replacing it with something else. You don't just say, I don't want to think this, I'm going to stop thinking. No, you replace it with something else, okay? So in the next session, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it will be around changing your brand new speaking identity. And we'll probably talk about the language that we use. We'll talk about some other things that are critical, right, critical to changing your identity. I want to invite you to also uh, keep an eye out in your email and Facebook group for our webinar coming up this Saturday. Okay. Any other comments, go ahead and leave them. And I will uh, see them here and respond to them. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all for attending and thank you for your participation.